Cooper's Furry Development Association is a nonprofit uh, development corporation founded here in the city of Camden uh, by the city of Camden, Campbell Soup, and RCA back in 1984. Our mission was to redevelop uh, the city of Camden uh, in its entirety uh, by looking at both the infrastructure as well as the different opportunities for new businesses to come into the city. And we've been fulfilling that mission uh, since we are our creation. I'm here in the Sam Jones Innovation Center in the South Jersey Technology Park at Rowan University. The center contains engineering R&D labs and a business incubator and supports the engineering clinic program, which is a hallmark of Rowan University. In engineering clinic, multidisciplinary teams of students are trained to design, develop, and deliver on projects that are sponsored by industry, state, and federal agencies. With the opening of the South Jersey Tech Park, we now have the potential for Engineering Clinic to spin off startup businesses by our engineering graduates. Kramer Hill CDC is a community development corporation. We develop housing, we develop park space, we do everything that would make a community a vibrant area. Specifically what we're trying to do is reconnect the communities of Camden back to their waterfronts. Von Nader Park, uh, specifically in Kramers Hill in Camden, uh, has had a situation for the last 30 years with their runoff. And not so much the runoff, but also the sewer system that they have. On some of the smallest rainfalls, the water will literally cover the entire park and prevent people from playing football or baseball or whatever, the, whatever they might be doing in the park, as well as back up into people's homes. Uh, the flooding is so severe that it goes across the street and then it will flood people's houses. We had 600 people that signed in and came to meetings and we had about 15 meetings throughout the year. Uh, throughout those meetings we did several exercises which sort of prioritized what you would like to see. And for every single meeting that we had, the number one issue that people wanted to see done immediately with the neighborhood plan was remediation at Monita Park. Flooding was the number one issue. The flooding has just gotten worse over time. It ruins the fields, it limits the use on the field. We have a very active Cramer Hill Little League here. It's actually the most active urban baseball Little League uh, in the country. And that field is the only field that they play on. My name is Brent Cole. I'm a senior civil environmental engineering major. My name is Brent Farrell and I'm a junior civil environmental engineering major. On last semester for the project we had to make several site visits to the Vanita Park area. It consisted of us going out to Camden actually um, collecting field topography data and we used this to take in and import into the lab and the lab will simulate the characteristics of the flooding. This project has allowed a lot of students to learn about things that normally would never be taught at an institution like this or at Rowan ever before. It has allowed them to visit communities, interact with people, uh, you know, provide aid to these individuals and to really understand that the engineering work they do isn't simply math and numbers, but there are people out there who depend on it and are actually uh, affected. We started working with Rowan University about a year ago, Eddie, and they say, hey listen, we're doing some work as well at the federal government level for uh, pipe, testing out pipes for both the space shuttle and for, um, I think it was aircraft carriers or cruisers or something in the military, but trying to figure out steam lines and how the pipes go through and to do simulations that in the event that there was a rupture in one of those lines, how they could simulate a rupture and then trace back to find out where the ruptured line was. Very technical way for us is we're sitting there looking at it and we're saying, wait a second, we have a similar problem except for instead of a line being pressurized and blowing out, we have clogs and blockages which then enable the water to flow up to the surface. Can we do the same thing that they're doing with the space shuttle and with ships? Can we apply it to sewer systems? And the answer that we got back was yes. The simulation offers people the ability to quickly and easily run various parameters through it. So we can change the precipitation, the amount of rainfall, uh, the likelihood of the storm. We can go in and actually modify the elevation data inside of the city, see whether or not cutting or filling an area could help with erosion control or just simple runoff. Uh, by quickly changing all these parameters and almost in real time being able to see the results, we can easily come to conclusions quickly and effectively. I came into civil engineering because I didn't want to sit at a desk and I didn't want to, you know, 
just work on a computer the whole time. And there's a lot of projects going on that are very interesting. True. But this one, we're able to go out, we're able to help people immediately, and we're able to see immediate results. The cave itself allows a user to basically be completely immersed within a virtual reality simulation. Uh, the way it does this is it encapsulates a person uh, with either four or more screens. As the user would walk around the cave, the tracker would continually update the different screens, making them feel like they're actually in that place. It's not like developing buildings or a park or something else where people can actually see real pictures. Uh, but when you can go and look at the cave like we did at Rowan University and see what's done there and they can actually see the neighborhood and hopefully soon be able to see what happens with flooding uh, and how that can be remediated, I think that begins to have them more involved uh, civically, more excited about a project. Other areas that this can go into are uh, numerous, such as uh, traffic control, you know, whether or not a road system leads to congestion, safety for the public, uh, whether or not th there's a potential threat or hazard, how people would be affected by that. We can introduce crowd simulation inside of it. So it allows for more if-when questions in the virtual world than what you could ask in the paper world where you're trying to write the stuff down and, and calculate it out. And when you're able to do that, since the computer's already doing the calculations for you, that saves time and money. The eventual outcome would be uh, we would be able to create these simulations of cities, not just for this area in particular, but literally any place that is able to provide us with simple elevation information or precipitation information. If you can solve the problems without having to wait for them to happen, then you've got a solution on your hands. And in the end, simulation makes sense. It, it has us really excited as we watch to see how we can apply this type of technology. It's not just engineering, it touches base in a lot of different areas. Um, and this is important, uh, especially for a university, to educate its students and to provide them with opportunities they would normally never have. At the end of the day, we just want to help people live better lives.